Yes, hello everyone. Uh, this is David Olani uh the host and creator of Let's Talk Creatives, uh, set up to engage with creative individuals uh, through conversation. Uh, our special guest is Kalenchi Wanavi. Is that Kalenchi yeah, Wanavi? Nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, yeah, if you'd like to uh, introduce yourself to everyone that's listening and watching. All right. My name is uh, Kili Chowaneri. I'm a Nigerian artist. I live and work in Lagos, Nigeria. So basically that's all. I'm self-taught. Finished from the University of Nigeria in Soka. Yeah. Nice, nice. Nice. So, uh, so uh, what uh, inspired your work? Well, basically... My work is inspired by African symbols and uh, lost languages. But each painting individually is telling a separate story or sometimes a unified story. Uh, basically, what I try to do is uh, I try to paint out things happening around me. I guess. Sometimes I link them up in series of works. Sometimes I do it in individual painting. Yeah. So the major characteristic of my work is the black figures. This is this black figure. And they're inspired by the idea of scars and tribal marks. You know, there are some events that happen to us in life. And they leave us either scars, good or bad. Okay, so it's the idea, this is the basic idea behind the carvings on my work. I try to like paint out the more like the character of the subject instead of just trying to represent figuratively what I see as a human figure. I try to paint out the character. That's why I use those um, patterns. And most times in the paintings, those patterns tell you the kind of um, subjects I'm painting about. You understand? I understand. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So basically, that is it. Then a lot of um, surrealistic painters too inspire me. That's why my scenes are kind of unusual. Because, uh, because the work is uh, surrealistic. Yes, there's a strong sense of uh, surrealism in the art yeah. piece. Um, perhaps a bit of uh, like Salvador Dali. Yeah. Uh, Salvador Dali. Yeah, and um, I like your use of symbology within your work. It makes it that that much more powerful. And uh, I like the narrative. I can see it, it's, it. I could tell you have a strong sense of narrative storytelling within your artwork. Yeah. Uh, this is what I really appreciate about your work. It's not just. It's not just the execution of the details. It's the subject and the themes that are put in place. And, um, you know, and like when you talk about the lost language within African culture, I see that as well. It's very, yeah. it's very, very interesting work. Yeah, very thank interesting you. Work. Yes, so. Personally, I feel symbols and, and uh, science symbols are kind of strongly related to African art, original African art, because from my personal research, I figured that uh, most of our ancestors didn't really paint out stuff realistically. Okay. Most of their art was strongly symbolical. So this is part of the reasons why I include all those symbols and mythology in my work instead of straight realism. Yeah. I have a strong, yeah, there's a strong sense of um, uh, mythology within your work. And you st 
I'm just, I'm assuming you study African mythology because it's quite apparent. As far as I'm concerned, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, I'm guessing. I'm assuming you study African mythology. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Okay. It's not in a formal school setting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, can you tell us about um, artsy.net? Because I saw that link on your Instagram, artsy.net. Yeah, artsy, it's, a, it's, an, um, it's a website, basically, where it's one of the most reliable places to connect with uh, contemporary artists and their works all over the world. So why it's on my profile is because this year's 154 Contemporary African Art Fair has been hosted online on Artsy. So to view my, since I'm showing, to view my works and works of other artists, that link is the easiest way to access. So Artsy is just a website that connects viewers and gallery owners to artists and their works and a brief history, because you can view the bio, previous works of the artist, uh, previous exhibitions, future shows, ongoing shows, you get. So that's basically what I say. Mm, okay. So are there any particular pieces you're working on at the moment? So are you working on anything right now? Uh, right now, just some... I'm trying to make a few stuffs on paper, a few stuff on paper, small works. But broadly, I'm working on a solo show, which is coming up later later on in the year. And yeah, for for that show, I want to talk about climate change. Sorry, are you there? For that show, I want to speak on climate change. It's yeah. it's a growing global challenge. Yeah. It's a growing global challenge causing a lot of displacements. So basically, that's the um, that's the um, basic theme I'm working on for my solo show. But aside from the issue on climate change, I'm exploring some surrealistic drawings with pastel and uh, acrylic on paper. So basically that's what I'm doing at the moment. Okay. So um, we're going through this global lockdown. How has this situation affected you? Well, as artists, I can say, I can, I, 80% of artists would say this, we are always on lockdown. So the, uh, the, hmm. look, the, the, the only difference is this lockdown is due to a global pandemic. So if it's, as, if it's related to timing, yeah, it's not really different because this is how I live almost indoors every time, working or painting. So generally, the the lockdown side of the global pandemic uh, hasn't really made much difference to me personally. In terms of um, work, uh, ability to or availability of materials, it's been quite tasking because right now we just have to buy a whole lot of um, work materials to avoid you going out and coming in. And a couple of shows have been either canceled, postponed, or just held online. And the truth is, the response to, this is the personal observation, the, the response to online shows is not as um, instant and vivid as uh, live shows put hanging the works on the wall and all. So, so that's the major part where the lockdown and pandemic has really, really 
caught up on the personal level and artists. A couple of shows have been cancelled and some have just been held online. Okay. So apart from the cancelled shows, well, staying indoors with the lockdown is almost a habit. And yeah, the the global pandemic too has taken a toll on the price of the price of materials. You get everything is quite more expensive right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, that that's it. That's it. It's uh, thanks to God. It's not personally. It's not really been so so tough for me. But I, I have a couple of colleagues that this um, period has really really been hectic. In terms mm-hmm. of raising funds and working. A lot of them with cancelled shows and no dates for postponement, and it's really really difficult for a couple of my colleagues. But personally, well, it's been not so bad. It's been not so bad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I would like to ask, um, how is the art scene in Nigeria? right now how 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 is it well the accent in nigeria i can only give you an answer from my own perspective yeah i think the this the art environment professional in nigeria responds differently to different people for some it's uh quite slow for some it's cool but personally I feel the art scene in Nigeria is still growing. It's still, it's still developing and it's really gaining ground as fast as possible. Uh, we, I, personally, I don't feel we have um, great buyers of art, huge art investors. I'm, I'm not sure we have huge art, art investors based in Nigeria, but we really do have um, wonderful galleries doing wonderful work to promote uh, Nigerian artists, both emerging and uh, established. So, yeah, the art, the art scene in Nigeria is, if I would summarize, it's not, it's not bad, it's not poor, okay? But at the same time, it's not the best it can be. It's okay. not the best it can be, yeah? Because as an up and uh, coming artists, it's really, really difficult to break through. It's really, really difficult. Most times, these galleries want to work with um, already established names. And for you, with a very, very scanty CV, it's always very difficult to gain their trust to want to you know, invest in you. So that's the major challenge and um, an imagine artist faces around there. It's difficult to get the attention. It's really, really difficult. But most times, when you find yourself in the right gallery, there are a few of them. They do their best to, you know, push the artists out there. And fortunately, I happen to be uh, a beneficiary of one of those uh, few galleries. I would say, yeah, they're doing their best around here. Yeah. Ah, uh, so um. Could you name a couple of the shows that you're supposed to have this year that perhaps got affected um, by this lockdown situation? Yeah, I was supposed to have an exhibition in Dubai where it wasn't just meant to be an exhibition, it was meant to meet the owners of the galleries to plan ahead of some other, for some other shows later in the year and probably next year. But that was the, I think that was the peak of the panic, the period of the exhibition. So it had to be online So It wasn't totally cancelled, but it had to be online. And I would say the response uh, hasn't really been so, so encouraging. But it has been okay. It has been, it has been good. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's it. 
Yeah, okay. Okay. And uh, did you did you mention how like I read that um you're inspired um by uh Ken Wadubu? You're inspired yeah. by Ken Wadubu. Um and uh who else? Arenze. Yeah, Arenze, Arenze Stanley and uh Kelvin Okapo. Yeah. Okay. Um initially when I uh decided I wanted to take up this as a full time career. I I fell in love with um pencil realism, pencil portrait. As at that time one of the most interesting pencil artists I ever seen was Kelvin Okafo. Yes. Yeah. So seeing his work it's I was surprised that yes, yeah, something can like that can be done with pencil. So it uh, inspired me, it motivated me to, you know, I wanted to discover how to do this. And along the line, I figured out that, oh, I had uh, friends close by that were really, really doing this and doing it well. That's Ken and Larenze. So both their works and both their efforts and everything they were doing at that time really, really uh, motivated me and made me believe that, okay, yeah, you could, you know, push this to an extent. But along the line, I realized that, okay, uh, pencil realism wasn't for me. Because uh, so many times, part of them was that uh, I started getting bored, working on just one face, okay, trying to pull out all the details on, it was getting really boring for me. I, I felt restriction in my in my mode of expression. I wasn't I wasn't expressing freely. I wasn't telling the stories I wanted to tell because I was limited to okay, just taking a photograph and trying to remake the photograph. So along the line, artists like Kerry James Marshall. Yeah. Is a black you you yeah yes so, I know I know him yeah seeing works of Kerry James Marshall really changed my whole conception of what um, wonderful art should look like and that was when the first idea of a black figure came to me and with time with reading and getting to understand myself more I how am I still doing this? Basically, it all started with um, inspiration from pencil realist. So you've merged um, the both together in a way. So you've merged, you've merged the detail, a bit of the detail in terms of figure with um, conceptual ideas. Yeah. 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 That's what I managed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's very impressive. Um, because um, it touches on um, uh, Ken Wadubu um, with the contemporary realism movement. Yeah. While where the two kind of forms of art are merged wow. together. And I think it makes it more exciting, you know, to yeah. have um, stories within the images, not just, not just hyperrealism by itself, but hyperrealism merged with uh, con uh, conceptual art. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it make it just make yeah. I just find you know that's why like obviously I'm a fan. Everyone you've mentioned, KV James Marshall, um, and everyone that I'm a fan of every, everyone's work. You know, so all of yeah. you guys, you know, I've you know I've already you know I spoke with uh, Ken already. Really um, talented guy. Really nice guy. Um, I've interviewed him a couple of times on my um but yeah like uh, i'm just interested to see what's going on in africa you know in terms of the art scene yeah so i need to know what's going i need to know what's going on <clears throat> That's well, I'm, reaching out. I'm reaching out to you guys you know i'm looking i look for you guys you know just to see what's going on because i'm excited to see um how the art movement develops in Africa, you know. I think it's a very important thing um, to grow, 
you know, I think it's a very important subject. It's a yeah. very important subject to me. Yeah. 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 It's good you're interested. It's good to have more people interested in the African arts. And like some we say, this is the age of um, the African Renaissance. This is, um, I won't call it rebirth, but it's, uh, feel personally, it's a very important point in, um, it's a very important stage in the history of African art. I feel the point we are living in is a very important stage and uh, whatever happens now, the kind of works, the kind of artists that come to light would really, really determine uh, the place of um, African art in the global art scene in years to come. So I feel right at this point, very, uh, it's a very, very, very sensitive point in African art history. So it's, it's awesome to have people like you and other people trying to pick interest and document and discover and rediscover African artists and what they do. It is really interesting. Yes, definitely, definitely. It's, um, it's, super, it's super important for me anyway. It's super important. I'm an artist myself. I love art. Um, and like my yes, my lineage is African, my lineage is um, Nigerian. But um, uh, regardless, uh, the diaspora globally, it, it really the art scene really needs to grow, you know, because I just feel there's been an off-key conditioning within parts of the diaspora, and like like needs like um, the history of African art. I feel has been forgotten by many people yeah. in some parts and it just, you know, but you don't realize, I think, I just think it's important to see a high level of encouragement within the diaspora of African art. I think it's yeah. important, you know, yeah. because you, all you guys, you're young artists, you're really, it's, I could see something special happening, you know, like you, Oscar, Ken Wadibu, Kelvin, or like all you guys, you know, like there's plenty more names, but uh, yeah. it's very, it's like what you guys are doing is very, very important. It's very important because there are little kids that are watching you and like they're watching you, you know. So there are lots of people, lots of young people that are looking up to you and they'll be yeah. referencing you, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. so. So yeah, I see big things happening for like ev everyone I speak with. I see big things happening for you, but the, this movement you guys are creating is is a special thing, you know. And I just hope to, I just want to see you guys grow. I, I want to see you guys be successful. I want like the the way Picasso is, Basquiat, all these big 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 artists. I know yeah. you guys like you guys are superstars in my eyes, but I know it'll properly be like at the high 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 big big level you know i know yeah. so, so yeah so i just want to um create these podcasts to encourage and inspire um people and like, i just want to see you guys i just want to see you guys grow to some next level shit you know so, yeah sure. that's what i'm about man that's what i'm about man well thank you uh welcome you get yeah yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. especially to um, emerging artists in Nigeria, if for whoever is watching, I'd just like to tell the person that uh, your dreams are really, really valid. No matter how um, difficult your um, environment or situation might seem or look, your dreams are really, really valid, and a bit of hard work and grace would actually get them in real time, in good time. So it's it's really, really good to you know keep on dreaming and keep on pushing. Truth is, nobody really gets there. You just keep on growing and growing and growing. With time, 
you see that you just find yourself doing all the things you probably wanted to do. So never give up. Never give up. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, for the people out there that want to learn more about your work, um, where can they find you? I have a website where my bio and some of my works are kilit1a.com. But if it's about purchasing art, a couple of galleries you can contact for my work. But personally, or uh, not first for right now, just Ebony Curated because that's where I'm having my solo show. That's the gallery hosting. So for now, basically everything about me you can get either on my website or from Ebony Curated. You can message them via email or look them up on Instagram and you get all the information you need. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. Yeah, okay. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share? Uh, basically, that's all. Okay, no, yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, your work, no, your work is uh, amazing. Like, just obviously keep it up. Um, keep, uh, keep, uh, keep me posted on, like, any events or any projects or whatever. You know, when, obviously, when all this blows over, I know you'll be ex back to normal exhibiting again so yeah just keep me posted on any updates sure also anything uh yeah so yeah kelechi thank you very much for your time thank you david yeah it's been awesome talking to you yeah you too you too uh take care and stay safe and yeah. uh, we'll catch up okay Bye. Bye. All right, take care. Bye.